Hey, what's up YouTube and welcome to a new devlog about my game Volunteers. Alright, so in the previous devlog what we did is that we created new maps for my game so it's a little bit more interesting to play with and now I guess we're ready to move forward. There is a lot to do though so I guess that before we start it's time to get some fuel. We're good to go. So previously it was pretty hard for the player to see if he hit someone. So I added a simple hit marker. As soon as the player hit the other one, you see the small X. I think it's good. Ouch. Very nice. So next I wanted to add a bullet impact that is customizable for each weapon. Alright, let's see how it looks in game. Um yeah, something's wrong. Is it the right size? Think so, right? This is this looks great. Let's try it again. Wait, where are my impacts? Um, yeah, that's great. All right, this time it will work, I believe. Nice, I like it. That's perfect. Let's be honest. If you're able to draw a smile in your game, it means that you did a great job. Okay, so remember that this is a multiplayer game, so we need to make sure that everything is being synced. Like this, I think it works great. There is a problem though, having a aim like this is gonna be awful for the other players. I mean, it's a straight line, so I wanted to introduce some random like this, but this is too random. I mean, you cannot like level up your gameplay because every bullet just go in every direction. So I decided to introduce a spray pattern, just like this. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right i'm kidding this pattern won't be part of the game but let's be honest this is pretty funny i mean there will be smile everywhere in the game all right but because i wanted to introduce a little bit of random in this pre pattern this causes an issue with the server because if you see at the bottom there is the recoil and every step should be the same thing on the client and on the server but obviously that's not the case right now so what you see from the client is not exactly what happens on the server, which is bad. We have a problem. One way to fix that is to have a seed that is being synced with the client and the server. That should fix the issue. If you look on the left and on the right, all the steps are exactly the same, even though we have random with our spray pattern. So I think that's pretty cool. I'll take it. Let's have a look at how it looks now in the game with all the sync and everything. So you see on the left and on the right everything is the same because we synchronize the spray pattern and stuff. That's perfect, exactly what I'm looking for. Nice! Okay, before we move to the next step, let's fix the spray pattern because obviously the smile was just a joke. Okay, so what I want to do next is that I want to share my game again with my friends so they can give me some feedbacks on the spray pattern and the random and stuff. The thing is, I'm getting tired to deliver my game from URL that my friends need to download and then modify some stuff. It almost feels like they are hacker, you know? Hacker man. So I think I'm gonna change the system a little bit. I'm gonna add a login screen and everything. This way it's gonna be easier to place people in the right team. Obviously I started with the basic user and password box, but something felt wrong. I mean, it's really important to do a login screen the right way because this is probably the most vulnerable place of your game and doing it myself might open doors for hackers and stuff and I kinda don't want to deal with it so I decided to log in my system using Discord but this felt wrong again, I mean we don't see any game doing that so... I got another plan. Like most games, I decided to go with Steam. Here's how it's gonna work. The player will launch my game from Steam like any other game then the game will request a authorization token from Steam. With this token, I'm gonna be able to contact my server. This server is only like a private server that is gonna contact back Steam again with the information that we gather from the client. And we're gonna validate that the client is exactly the one that he pretends to be. Let's be honest, this feels so much better than just having a user pass box, right? So as soon as the player has been validated, he's gonna join the queue with the other players that has already joined this exact queue. We're gonna call this server the lobby and the queue will be basically the players, right? Awesome, so we're ready for the next step and this is for the lobby server to contact Playfab to start an instance of my server. Don't worry, we're gonna talk about Playfab later on in the video. I'm gonna explain what it is and why I use it. 
that's nice. So with the information that we gather from the Labby server, we can now join the server launched by Playfab. And now guess what? We just play the game. Actually super easy, barely an inconvenience. All right, that sounds fun on paper, but to be honest, this was still a journey that was pretty hard to set up everything together. But at the end, I was really satisfied with it. Let's jump into it. All right, so the first step is to set up a Steam account. And yes, the process cost money, but I felt like anyway, I would have to do it at some point. So let's do it now. This is also at this moment that I discovered that there is an upcoming game called Volunteers on Steam with Unreal Engine not made by me. Oh, dang it! I guess we'll have to tweak the name a little bit, but anyways. I've added the Steam API in my game and look at this, we already see on Steam that I play my game Volunteers. It's really satisfying to see and I can even open the Steam overlay directly in my game. I'm really happy with it, it was easy to do. Okay, next, I did set up a small login screen. As you can see here, there is the title and the welcome Steam art, so it means that I logged into Steam and then on my private server. Very nice, we can see that this step is being done and this one as well. Very cool. Next step, I think we're gonna need to work a little bit on the lobby screen. This way we're gonna be able to join the queue with the other players. I just added a small label on top of the player and just like this, voila, we have a basic working lobby system. Nice. All right, so I wanted to do this part for a long time. If you don't know what Docker is, basically this is a way to run an application within a minimal operating system. This way you can run several instances of the same application, but within an isolated environment, which means that they don't communicate with each other. That makes it really easy to just deploy it at several places, including Playfab. So that's really good for us. So let's have a look at it. Here, I have my image of my server. This one includes a minimal Debian with all the dependencies I needed for my game. So if I press run here, it's gonna create for me a new instance of my server with a random port and I can add a new one just like that. So I have two instances of my server running on Docker right now with a different port. That looks promising. So let's implement it in the lobby now. So I want the lobby to instantiate all the container for me. From here, if I press the start button, I'm gonna enter in a matchmaking state and if someone else enter in the, the same state, we're gonna find a match and a new instance of the Docker image will be instantiated and we join the game. Perfect. If we look here on Docker, the game is started, the server running. I think we can say that the lobby is completed. Okay, now we need to do the same thing, but on Playfab. If you don't know what Playfab is, this is basically an online service by Microsoft that allows you to host your multiplayer server and so much more. And they also have a free plan for development. So we're going to try it. This is the first time for me. I created an account right here. I set up all my build. I uploaded my Docker image. I created region that allows me to create standby servers. So now I updated my lobby system to make sure that it communicates with Playfab and now we got a match and look at what we have on the Playfab page. If we look here, we have an active server now. So. Really cool, we can even start another matchmaking from the lobby system and we found a match, awesome! So it created another server from the Playfab system and if we look on Playfab, we got two active servers, that's perfect! I think we can say that the play the game is done now and now it's time for... Hello? Speedboard? Hey, what's up, Woom? Hey, how what's you, up? How are you doing? I'm doing great, what about you, man? I'm doing great. I remember we played uh, my game Volunteers long, not so long ago. Yeah, yeah, for sure I remember. Alright, but guess what? It's on Steam now. No way, on Steam? So it's official, right? China, yeah, well, only for you and me, I guess. No one else can see it, but oh. we, we can play together. Yeah, for sure, I'm done. Uh Nice, so directly from Steam, I can see my volunteers game here, I can log in, I see that Tom's playing, nice. I guess that the only thing left to do is to try to find a match, right? Alright, so let's start the matchmaking then. Match found already, very nice. Hey Woom, you see that? Oh my god, this map is insane, Spimor. Thank you. Alright, so I, I want you to test this pre-pattern. Like, right, yeah, sh shoot um, the building here. 
How do you like it? Yeah, hey, yeah. It's, it's it's nice. I like it. It's kind of uh, like Valorant and Cud together. Nice, nice. All right, folks. That's all I had to show for this vlog. I'm really happy to see that the system that I tried to build is working the way I want. This was important for me to test it early in the project because I could have wasted my time working on something that didn't work after all. So now we know, right? All right. We're gonna see each other on the next one.